Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Axe, Bow, and Staff. It's developed by Clue Cat Games. You can pick it up for $9.99 on Steam for Windows, Steam Play, and Mac. It supports Steam achievements, Steam trading cards, cloud saves, leaderboards, has full controller support, and supports online and local co-op. I will be playing a free press copy that was provided to me in order to make this video. I will have links to the game Steam page and official page and any other relevant links in the description below the video. So let's go ahead and hop right on in. I already have a game. We got about two hours in here. So this is an interesting little game. Basically, it's kind of like an auto runner, but you control three characters at the same time. So with that being said, it can be very tricky. Uh, and I want to hop right into the game to show you how it works. So, but we're going to start and play an old stage. Let's go ahead and make this. Oh, we can't control her in this one. So let's do this one instead. Good. All right. So we'll get started and then I'll circle back around and kind of explain the mechanics and I'll explain them obviously as we're going along here. So we have our two characters right now. We're about to meet the third. We have the guy with the axe, the guy with the staff, and then we have the lady with the bow. Hence the name, axe, bow, and staff. So it's it's kind of an auto runner. And again, uh, if you're playing this solo, you're playing all three characters. And you can actually play local co-op or multiplayer. I have not gotten the online co-op to work. Uh, just probably because I, I haven't tried that much to be fair. But I'm gonna guess it's just not a lot of people have bought the game just yet. So that's probably why. So as it says, I can switch quickly switch between the three where the guy with the axe is one, the guy with the, or I'm sorry, the girl with the bow is two, and the wizard is three. As you might imagine, they each have their own perks, drawbacks, etc. The lady with the bow here, we're gonna destroy this. And we're gonna destroy this as well. So the guy with the axe, we'll talk about him first. He can do melee attacks like so. He can also do a shield block. Now that shield block just comes up for a second. You can't just press and hold it. I don't know why he dropped it down there, but okay. Uh, that is kind of a checkpoint. Well, it is a checkpoint. And if any of your party members have died, they will resurrect once you got there. Uh, but anyway, going back to the classes, we've got the axe guy who I just talked about. Then we have the ranger who I've just switched to. She has a long range arrow and she can actually jump over obstacles, but she cannot break barrels. She can jump over them though. The wizard's the interesting one. He's definitely significantly different, significantly different than the others. When you hold J, uh, it slows down time and you can actually move an enemy on the lane to another lane. So I'm gonna actually move him down there so that the archer can take care of him. As you can see, the AI took him out, which is quite nice when it works. And we will definitely be talking about that. Let's go ahead and move him down to the archer's lane. There we go. And she did take him out again. Excellent. And the warrior actually blocked the shield, which is good. We can move this guy onto that switch. That switch will usually open up uh, or drop down spikes that are in your way. Uh, so you definitely want to do that. Oops, I actually moved him down there. My, my bad. Sorry, buddy. Move them over there. So let's talk about the AI, because that's a very important aspect of this game. By the way, if you didn't see, I just moved that goblin onto the top of that button, which dropped the spikes. The archer can also shoot that button with her arrow, and it will also drop the spikes, which is very useful. Now, these guys, we cannot, uh, we can't move them. Normally, you can dispel them, but it would, oh, it's because I was behind them. So before we talk about the AI, one other very important aspect we have to talk about is the ordering. So when I move my wizard down, if I'm behind anybody else, ah, uh, shoot, there we go. If I'm behind anybody else, I cannot do your abilities. So the only the person in the front of the row can attack. That's why it's really best if you can to have everybody on different rows. And you move rows, uh, if you're using the keyboard, which I am, you use uh, you change between rows with the W and S keys, and you can go from the top to the bottom. So, for example, if you watch, now I'm going to go from the top to the bottom instantly, which is actually a very very nice feature. And I realize we're taking a lot of damage here. That's fine. I'm kind of letting them work with this while I explain some of the various mechanics of the game, uh, because some of this is going to be very important and uh, it's going to deal with some of the criticisms I have uh, about the game. So it's important to kind of understand how that works. 
uh, with the way the rose works. So again, you'll see again, the wizard is behind the ranger, so there's nothing I can do. We're going to actually let her wail on the boss. And she takes him out easily. Now she's got some upgrades, so normally he's not quite that easy. But it's the first boss, so that's to be expected. So let's talk about the AI. If you're playing solo, you're you're going to mostly have to to be okay with the AI. This guy apparently was turned into a giant rat. He's glad he's not a rat anymore, so he gave us money. Uh, let's just go back to the world map while I kind of explain the AI so I can actually focus on this. So, you can switch between characters, as we talked about before, by pressing one, two, or three. So theoretically, you can try to control all three of them by quickly switching between them. However, I feel like that's going to be hard for a lot of people. I know it was very difficult for me because I am trying to, okay, I'm, I'm the ranger and I'm in the top lane and, oh, there's somebody I need to shoot at the bottom lane. So I need to switch down the bottom. Oh, wait, there's somebody that the wizard needs to deal with. So I need to drop down to the bottom lane with the wizard or with the ranger, shoot an arrow and then switch back to the wizard and then press J and then move him. And, oh, wait, I need to move my warrior now to get down here and block the shot. So, and keep in mind, all of this is going on very, very quickly. So unless you're very good at picking that kind of stuff up, well, quickly, I think a lot of people trying to play this solo are gonna get frustrated. I've gotten very frustrated because if you're not controlling them yourselves, which I am not fast enough to do, at least not yet, not without a lot more practice, you are gonna have to rely on the AI. The AI is incredibly spotty. Sometimes, like you just saw, it can be fine. Like in that, in that mission, it actually did very well. The warrior was blocking and attacking. The ranger was jumping over things, I think, and attacking. It all worked out fine. But then on some stages, it's like there's nobody, the, the lights are on, but nobody's home. There's nobody behind the wheel. If you get, as you might imagine with these auto runners, if a character gets stuck behind, let's say a rock and gets pushed off screen, they die and they're gone until you can get to one of those checkpoints to resurrect them. Some of these later stages, your AI teammates will get stuck behind a rock that they could easily get around and die. Or I've seen the warrior just stop shielding and attacking. Like a warrior or an enemy will run into him and he'll just get killed by it or get pushed off the screen. The ranger will not jump over things that she can jump over, get pushed off the screen and die. This is by far my number one complaint because if if I'm going to have to have the AI to help, and again, reasonably, unless you, uh, A, practice this game quite a bit and really master the controls and the idea of switching between heroes very quickly, or unless you have somebody to play with, because it does support local multiplayer uh, co-op uh, and online co-op, you're going to have to rely on the AI. It is incredibly frustrating to lose your, your AI people because they did something incredibly stupid. If it was something that you should have been able to help with and you just weren't paying attention, that's one thing. But while you're trying to focus on, you know, opening that gate so that you can get through only to see your warrior standing and staring stupidly at a rock as he gets killed, it's insanely frustrating. Uh, let's go ahead and pick a harder, let's go, let's go to this, this stage. This way, now that you kind of understand the mechanics a little bit. Another thing that can be, and they do try to mix the stages up. Like it's not just running and killing enemies. Like here, for example, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, we're gonna, right, yeah. Sure, we'll try it. And there's no dialogue, there's just kind of emoticons. And they're, they're cute, you kind of get the idea of the story. The warrior is the one who's hungry all the time and the other two are just like, ah, oh, geez. Ah, warriors. Ideally, I should have just switched to the ranger there. But um, the other thing that is uh, infuriating to me is that... Um, oops, I should have jumped over that arrow. The other thing that is infuriating to me is... And I can't really... Okay, I can show you now. What happens a lot of times is I will move to another row. And then I will... Hold on, let me... I'll move to another row, and then I'll come back into a row that has an AI-controlled uh, hero. 
Let's call them heroes just to make this uh, identification a little bit easier. I'll move my character in a lane with another hero, but I'll go behind that hero like this. And I won't notice it immediately, so I'm like sitting there trying to attack, and I'm like, oh, why am I not? Oh, I'm not attacking because I'm behind. Then I have to remember, you can push yourself forward by pushing uh, D on the keypad, so you can get ahead of the team by doing that. But a lot of time, again, where there's so much going on, especially when you get these speed boosts, it can be very difficult. Like, I actually just did it just then. I was like trying to shoot my arrows. And I was like, uh, why is it not shooting? And then I was like, oh, it's because I'm behind the wizard. All right, try not to die there. But uh, yeah, it can be insanely frustrating. It, I wish there was an option so that when you jumped into a lane, if you jumped into a lane that already had an existing AI character, it would, um, it would always put you in the front. Always. Like, make that toggle, toggle, toggle a bull. Wow. Come on, move him. Move him, please. Okay. There's weird little bugs like that, too. Uh, like, where I was trying to move that character, and he just refused to go up for some reason. Because typically, uh, yeah, we're dead. Oh, well, we actually somehow survived that. Uh, yeah, jump over those bombs. The archer is, in my opinion, the archer is by far the best. She's got a long range attack, She's got, and she's got a jump. Those two things alone are, are awesome. And the fact that her arrows can trigger... Uh, see, see, it did it again. I tried to jump down quickly to take him out, and I wanted to move back up. But it put me in the middle, so it didn't do it. So you kind of see where I'm talking about here, where... Like, okay, I want to get this guy down to here and move this bomb, because we can move the bombs here, by the way, and have them blow themselves up. And I'm trying to get the, nope. <laughs> trying to get the one guy up here. Nope, everybody move up. Everybody move up. Everybody move up. There we go. So stuff like that, like I say, it's the AI isn't quite smart enough to go, hey, maybe I should just move up. Oh, shit. I was actually busy looking at the, uh, the hammer guy there. So now you kind of see, again, what I'm talking about. There is a lot going on, like, constantly. These guys are basically like, oh, and see there. The wizard just died because I think he got stuck behind a rock. That should not happen. They should not be dying because he got stuck by a rock. And like I say, it seems like there's something wrong with the later stages. Because earlier stages, I hardly ever have that issue. Later on, though, again, they'll just, like walk right into this rock. Let's see if he does it. Nope, he, he dropped this time. I, it seems to be random. I don't quite understand it. Uh, and this is kind of a long section. Actually, I'm not sure why it's like this. This is kind of weird that there's no enemies. But, um, yeah, the... The game ends up to be more frustrating than anything to me because of some of these issues that I've talked about. The number ones, like I say, being the AI being bad, and unreliable and when you switch lanes how you get stuck in the middle especially again when you want to do something very quick like i want to drop down with the archer shoot an arrow and then pop back up if you get stuck in the middle you've got to remember oh i got to push right so i actually tried to get in the habit of every time i change lanes lanes to just press d automatically to push me up again Give me the option to just automatically be in the front of the row because I'm trying to look ahead of the fight. Like I'm trying to look up here, not back here to where the order of the, the heroes is. And again, this would not be an issue if you've got at least one other player. This would be far less of an issue. So let's look at some of the other aspects of the game that you've seen popping up here. So obviously you get the you get the star system. I'm sure we've all very familiar with this. It rates you on how you do uh, it seems to be rated mostly on coins and I think just overall time or maybe it's just coins and speed up bonuses. You saw the speed up bonus before. Honestly, these are a mixed blessing and I think it's supposed to be that way. When you speed up, you finish the level faster, obviously, but you also all of the complications of doing everything I've talked about so far magnifies because everything is coming so so quickly at you. But I think, again, I don't have a big problem with that because again, I feel like that's on purpose. You don't have to get those speed up bonuses, right? You can just skip them. In fact, some stages have slowdowns 
so that if you're having difficulty, you can grab the slow one and it makes the stage easier because you're, everything's moving slower. It's easier for you to kind of process uh, and react to things and move your heroes where they need to be to do the job that they need to do. So I'm actually okay with that mechanic because again, I feel like that's kind of a risk reward type thing. You go faster, you risk the chances of failing fast, uh, rate, failing more, but you get more points if you want to get more stars. And these stars do seem to be important as far as unlocking things. I'm not quite sure what, because, but it does keep track of how many total stars you've gotten. So you'll notice our heroes also have levels. As far as I can tell, I think they get levels more if you play them. I don't know if they ever level up if you skip them. Like, for example, you can tell the warrior I play the least because I feel like he's the weakest. His shield is nice, and he's the only one who can break boxes, but the rogue, or I'm sorry, the ranger can jump over them, and the wizard can move the move the barrels. It's not boxes, sorry, the barrels. So he's limited use in that, even though there's stuff in the boxes, so sometimes you want to destroy them. I feel the warrior is the weakest. Uh, his shield is honestly his most useful uh, perk. But... Um, so yes, they do level up, and you can replay levels to get more money and more levels. Speaking of money, let's go into the shop, to the Loot Drop Emporium. So all characters, at least at this level, have two slots. We have a weapon, and then we have an accessory. Some accessories are class-based. For example, these uh, arrowheads are only... Only the ranger can use those. But then other things like rings and like these eyeglasses... Uh, there's other things as well that any hero can use. And as you progress through the game, you unlock new things. Like when you very first get to the shop, like only like this much is available. Sorry about that noise, it's a little irritating. Uh, like the only like the first two rows are available. But the more and more stage, I don't know if it's stage based or if it's star based. That I'm not 100% sure, but as you progress through the game, more and more items will show up. Oh god, that noise. It's, it's a little irritating. It's fine when you're doing it this way, but then when you're doing that. I like how, you like how I did it again, just so I could be really annoying. But uh, anyway, you also have consumable items, like healing items. The nice thing about healing items, and almost every consumable item, is that when you use it, it usually affects your entire party. So that's actually really, really nice. So I've actually got my guys with newer weapons. And which obviously makes the the earlier levels a little bit easier. I also had the accessories. Now, some of these accessories, I think there was a little bit that was lost in translation because the descriptions don't make a lot of sense. For example, this accessory, it says, slow down the game time when hovering over the equipped hero. No idea how to use this. Uh, it says, when hovering over the equipped hero. Uh, I've tried using the mouse to hover over, which, I mean, I don't know why you would do that, but I, that did not work. I've tried pressing use keys to get it to work. I, I cannot figure out how to get this clock to work. And it may be something simple that I'm missing, but I, I do not get it. And like I said, the description doesn't really, really help much. But I've, I promise I have tried like hovering the mouse and clicking on it, and it, it did nothing. And by the way, I have actually tried this game with a controller. I actually find it harder with the controller. The main reason is because with the controller, I can't... When I want to switch, I can't switch immediately to the character I want. So for example, if I'm the wizard, and I want the ranger, I know I can just press 2, and I'm instantly the ranger. With the controller, you have to scroll through the heroes, and that little bit of extra time can, can cause trouble. And especially, again, when a lot of stuff's going on, it can be difficult to keep up with with who's selected if you're doing it that way. Whereas if I know it, I know for a fact if I press two, I'm choosing the ranger 100% of the time. So and some of these other items, uh, fairly standard stuff. Uh, more damage on the weapons increases the speed, increases the range of the ranger's weapon. Uh, the the mages or wizard or whatever he is, the staff is kind of interesting because this increases how much he can move. To start with, you can only move an enemy up and down one square. Later on, when you upgrade that, you can actually move them uh, like two squares, uh, forward, back, etc. Which is very handy because you can drop them in the traps, you can drop them on the buttons, etc. Uh, for points and what have you. Uh, but everything else here, fairly standard stuff. 
Now, some of this stuff, again, doesn't make a lot of sense. For example, we have this glass eye. Increases AI vision by six. What I'm assuming that does is it just makes it so that the AI-controlled char characters can see further ahead in the map and will tend to respond to what they see faster, which uh, typically is good. However, I've had issues sometimes where the wizard just random, seemingly randomly will move stuff. So I'll be walking in a path that's totally free of, of obstacles, and all of a sudden the wizard will drop a bear trap in front of me from another, like from another lane that we were going to skip, and I have to dodge it or get hit by it. So stuff like that can be annoying, but um, but yeah, it's, it's cool that there is these items. I do like that there's progression, both in items and with talents, which we're about to check that out in a second. Uh, but I do like that there's a reason to to get money, not just for score, but to increase your, your party strength as well. You can also upgrade things. Uh, like, I was going to upgrade this ring. So right now, this ruby ring gives hit points 20 to the warrior character. We have a chance to upgrade, but to get it to upgrade, we need five Turidites, which we've unlocked here in the store. Turidites, done this. So they're 100 apiece. Let's go ahead and buy five of those. I'm assuming the upgrade system is fairly straightforward. Upgrade. Nice. And we got an achievement for it. Sweet. So there is a little bit of depth to the item system, which I like. Uh, I like that. I, you're again, you're sacrificing some money to get this guy a little bit more strength. And I do think the characters have different hit points. It does feel like the wizards got the least, which would make sense. Very standard RPG fare. But um, and you can sell items back as well, and you can find items in stages in chests as well. So uh, you can find them to use. Or you can just end up selling them. There's a gold nugget. I don't know what that is, but I don't want to sell it because it seems important. Let's go back. And let's look at the upgrade system. Each class has its own upgrade tree, as you might imagine. The first one is self-explanatory. You don't really get a choice here for the warrior, for example. Increases the duration of the block by 30%. Uh, this one increases the arrows by 50%. And this increase or this makes the enemies paralyzed after he teleports them. But then once they hit level four, you can you start to have to make decisions. So here, we can either block and reflect ranged attacks, which actually is pretty darn nice. And we have shield block also shield all companions in other lanes, which is also very nice. I don't know how smart the AI is with using that, but if you had another player or even you yourself could use that without having to worry about switching around as much. Uh, and again, the Ranger. Let's just look at all of the abilities just so you can kind of get an idea of the upgrade. We're not going to look at all these tiers, but the ones that I can get now. The Archer can get Poison Arrows, which does a damage over time. Piercing Shot, which has a chance to pierce through the target. Here, I wish they would tell you what that percentage chance is. Because a 100% chance to poison versus a question mark chance to pierce. Eh, that's fairly questionable. And as for the Wizard... His options, auto dispel, I forgot, his other ability is dispel. Sometimes enemies will throw a debuff on your characters, like a poison dot or something that slows them down or something that freezes them in a block of ice. The wizard can dispel the your allies. Another important thing about to note about the wizard is that when you do that move thing, you do not have to be in the same lane. That's one very powerful thing about the wizard is that when you move enemies, you don't have to be in their lane in order to move them. It's very, very nice. So his abilities, the spell will automatically be cast when hero, and any hero is applicable. And the other one, after dispelled from negative effects, the heroes will be invulnerable for a short while. That's not too bad either. So if they get a debuff, you might actually let them get debuffed so that you can dispel it immediately and then let them be invulnerable for a few seconds, which is kind of nice. So let's actually pick, let's pick this one. The one where he guards everybody. Uh, the poison's not... The thing about this game is, as you've noticed so far, enemies tend to die with one or two shots. And the only guys who the poison would actually be useful for is bosses. But even piercing shot's not that great, but I feel like it would be more useful. So let's pick that. And let's go ahead and with the uh, auto dispel. Because there's not that many debuffs in the game, at least not that I've run into so far. So... Uh, we can automatically say next level, but we're going to go to the world map. 
Oh, yes. It's just saying that it's going to disconnect because I made that an online game. You can also make an online game from the main menu. So let's try one last stage. We're going to try this stage. Uh, I haven't done this one yet, so it's going to be iffy, I'm sure. And there's 30 levels total. There's also uh, a, a level that, an endless level where you just keep going and try to get the highest score. That's where the leaderboard comes into play, or at least one place, or the only place that I found that the leaderboard comes into play is the endless mode, trying to get the highest score that you possibly can. So once you beat the game or even before, if you kind of want to mix it up a little bit, you can try the endless mode to see how you do on the leaderboards. So let's go ahead and just start this. The music pretty good in this as well. Uh, I like it for the most part. Let's see if we can take these guys out. Oh. These guys do quite a bit of damage. Uh, one other thing. Uh, see, I was trying to block with the warrior, but he was in the middle. But uh, one other thing about this game is the coins. The coins aren't just for... ...are for score. You can also build up coins. Uh, nice. These guys shoot poison arrows, which are no bueno. And that the, this only seems to apply, damn it. This only seems to apply when we're in uh, the fast mode, but you'll see there's a little bar there. Of course, I keep getting hit, so I keep losing it. There's a bar to the top left there that fills up as we get coins, but it then it drops when we take damage. Ah, I thought I did that. But if you can get that to go all the way up, you basically get an invincibility mode and you just kind of fly forward with your weapon out and kill anything in your path. But needless to say, that is very, very nice. I really like that the AE, uh, AE thing. Oh, of course the wizard's gonna walk. See what I'm talking about there? That wizard just walked right into it. Eh, I shot a little bit too slow. It does feel like a lot of these upgrades can make up for... I should have went up. That was dumb. It can make up for some of the bad AI. For example, the shield blocking everybody. That's nice, so it's like if the enemy is too dumb to move, you don't have to worry about it too much. So the ranger is at least smart enough to keep attacking here. I'm gonna... As the warrior, I'm going to try to block. The mage is honestly fairly useless here. Unfortunately, they are not smart enough to move. Well, and once they've done that, you're dead. Because as far as I can tell, there is no way to actually attack him. So again, that's another problem I have with the game, is it feels like the, the ranger is by far the most useful character. Like, it's not even close. Well, I won't say that, but... She seems to be significantly better than the other characters. So since we're pretty much boned here, let's just restart the check. And I'll actually play the archer. But see, here's what I'm talking about where you really need to be able to switch because you want her doing damage, but you also need her to not stand in the way when this guy does the charge. Like I see, the other two characters are just kind of there. Uh, there's some terrible dodging of the daggers. This is one thing I wish I would have actually picked the poison for. Wait, can I actually... Oh, okay, I thought I could damage him from up there. And the warrior didn't come down. I should have moved him. All right, let's restart. We're gonna only try this like a couple times. You kind of, again, you kind of see where I'm talking about where you, you if you're playing solo, you, you absolutely have to learn to control the various characters. Like there's, there's no choice in the matter. You absolutely have to learn. Because there's too many times that the AI will bone you. See, I, I don't think he actually has the tell for that. Yeah, it sounds like if you don't see the little indicator there, he's going to come to the middle. Yeah. I'm just going to use the health potion. Uh, you've got three items that I talked about at the beginning, or at the top there. You hit R to use them. 
See, now the guy's not using his uh, shield at all. I've switched to the better healing potion. And again, the nice thing is the healing potion heals everybody. So yeah, the, obviously, again, the AI is not moving out of the way. So you would, if you don't want them to die, you have to move them. Yourself. And it's and for this fight, it's just not worth it. Because, uh, yeah, why? Like you see, I didn't need them to do anything. They were just kind of there. And as far as I can tell, the archer is the only one who can even do damage. And it's you know, entirely possible that I missed something there, but... Yeah, it's gonna get on the... They surprised by that they're on elevator? Or? I think they were apparently surprised that they hopped onto an elevator. When it started to jut, maybe they should have got off. Ah, sweet. Ranger got a, a lot of experience because, again, that's who I ended up playing the most. So we're gonna wrap up there. I, I do like these little cartoon skits. Or it's not even a skit, it's just a picture in between, like, whenever you go to a new section. So again, as you can see, it's got our total stars here again. I don't know if if things like the shop, the new items in the shop upgrade based on how far you progress or how many stars you get. I think it's just level progression, I think. But that's just, just the guess off of what I've seen. And, and yes, again, there are 30 levels and this unlocks eventually, this little crossed swords here. This is the endless mode. And this is my best score, which is my only score where you just, and it's randomly generated as well. As far as I know. And you just, again, you go as long as you can, try to get the most points that you can. So, let's go ahead. Apparently there's also a racing mode. I do, oh, I bet, oh, actually, you know what? I bet this is it. Ancient Olympic, Olympic Stadium, of course. Now, but on your player, if you haven't, game will start soon. Hmm, all right, let's try it. We must have just unlocked this, I think. Ha! Huh. Can we switch here? No, okay, so this one we cannot switch. Which makes sense. Ooh, that looks bad. Maybe they weren't bad. Wow, that archer is uh, blowing us away. I think the archer is cheating. She's juicing up. Wait, did I not get that speed boost? Uh, she's getting slowed down a little bit. Looks like she hit the trap. Oh! Hmm, I don't know what those symbols by me means. Something to do with the stuff that we picked up. Man, that archer is fast. Ah, oh, and I should have blocked. That was dumb. Oh! There's Mario Kart up in here. Ah, my sh There is a little bit of a cooldown on your swings. Not much. Or on your abilities, rather. Man, she is, like, not even, not even fair. Oh, I think it's just dropping that item on the ground. Whenever we get something from the chest. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna win. Ooh, it's, oh, I could've went top. Ah, nice, when you die, you have to fall down a while, nice. Oh, come on, even the wizard. Whoa! Oh, you know what? I wonder if I can throw these things. Nope. I'm like, trying to figure out how to use these items. Uh, oh, probably R? Ah, there we go. Oh, ah, here we go. Oh. And of course, I used it at the absolute worst time. One thing I don't like, like that, that head. This game has kind of an issue, too, where... Some of the foreground, foreground items block things, and it can be really hard to tell what the hell's going on. Or it, it, it can be hard to see, so like, there's a stage with stalactites, stalagmites, whichever ones, hang from the ceiling. Where block my view, and I'll end up running into a trap. It doesn't happen a lot, so it's not a major complaint, but, oh man, that, 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 I'm fairly sure that that archer is cheating. Let's use that. Oh, okay, the eggplant drops behind. I should have guessed that. Too slow on the shield. That 99 plus feet. The game's just like, you know, at this point, she is so far ahead, it doesn't even matter. She's about to lap. 
think you're cheating. But, if nothing else, this highlights just... Uh, see, look like that enemy behind the, the thing was kind of crappy. There are also... Like, you notice that little A that popped up next to me. That means that the character can't switch... Uh, sometimes that little uh, being able to go from the top to bottom is more of a curse than anything. Good lord! Seriously? Uh, it can be more of a curse than anything, because I'm quickly trying to move. I'm thinking, oh, I need to get to the top level, so I'll hit my button as many times as I can, and I'll end up dropping to the bottom level, and that's not good. So that's interesting. Uh, I don't know if that's auto-generated or not. Or not auto-generated, sorry. If that's randomly generated or not. But that actually is kind of interesting. But again, I feel like the archer would just be the best for that. Because, I f again, I feel like her range attack and having the jump is just very, very good. So collections, this is just the various pictures you've unlocked by doing this, the story. This gives us a list of all of our achievements. Uh, the online game, you can look to see if there's any games. I looked earlier and there's none. Looks like there's still none here. Oh, look, you can... I actually didn't notice this before. You can... If you wanted to just specifically do racing or endless mode, you can do that. Uh, let's see. Lastly, let's look at the settings and we'll wrap up this video. Very limited here. Full screen. Choose your resolution. Uh, sound and music have different sliders, which is always appreciated. Uh, you can turn on, I guess, probably means controller vibration. You can also switch our language and you can change your controls. Hopefully it's actually picking that up. I'm not 100% sure if it is. If the capture software that is kept picking that up. But, but yeah, that was Axe, Bow, and Staff. Here's who I think this game is going to be for. One, if you are in the group of people who likes this idea, this challenge of controlling three different characters and having the constantly, uh, well not constantly, but repeatedly switch between them because again, the AI is unreliable. So for that reason, you, especially as you get to the more difficult stages, it's really encouraged that you switch. Again, you kind of see that we kind of, uh, that we just stumbled through some of those stages, not doing great. So you can get through without switching, but it can take, you know, repeated resets, redoing certain areas. It would just be much easier if, if you're good at that kind of thing, where you can switch between characters and, oh, you know, this is coming up, I need to switch to the wizard, etc. So if you're looking for a game that's challenging in that regard, then I think this could be a very interesting game for you, because it's definitely challenging there. The other people I believe would be good for this is if you know some people like, if you have a friend who would like to play with you, at least one other person to play with, uh, either locally or online, which I don't know if you can set up private lobbies or anything. Uh, though, though, to be quite honest... Let's just try to host. Okay, you can set a password. So, if you want to just, you know, create a room for one or two friends, you can do that. That's the other people that this game is aiming towards. So if you have at least one other person to play this with, I feel like it could be some, it could be fun because you're not having to worry so much about trying to to control all three characters. If you only have the AI controlling one, it's just much less of a hassle. If you're gonna play this solo and you don't think that you would be very good at switching between the characters and you feel like you would get very frustrated with having to redo sections with check you know with the checkpoints or having to redo checkpoints because you know the the ai did something stupid like getting themselves killed or dropped something right in front of you things like that i would probably not suggest this game to you because uh, i ended up being very frustrated again but due to the ai just doing crazy stuff uh, and not reacting properly and i wasn't expecting perfect play because if it was then you know why would you have friends over and why would you have to learn to switch characters you just pick one and stick with it while the ai does the other two so there is a little bit of of give and take there but i i do honestly feel like again if you're going to play this solo and you don't really feel like you can easily learn how to control all three characters i think you would probably be frustrated now the one good thing as far as that goes is checkpoints are fairly regular and up until this point, there's only been one stage that I considered to be like really 
tough, and it wasn't even a stage. There was one checkpoint that was incredibly difficult because it had rocks that fell and insta-killed the character, and it showed on the mate on the floor where it was gonna pop up. So it wasn't random. But the, again, the AI kept getting themselves killed there, and I would get myself killed because there's so much graphic stuff going on that I would miss the X that shows that 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 area is an insta kill zone, things like that. That was probably the worst section by far. These other stages I've been able to breeze through, even if it took a couple of tries. That one last boss, uh, I I had actually played him before, and I don't think I was able to kill him. But you can see again, there's a little bit of balance issue there because the only character you even need is the ranger but uh, anyway that's my overall thoughts on axe bow and staff again it is only nine dollars and 99 cents and i will have a link to the steam page and the official page in the links or i'm sorry in the description below this video so if you are interested definitely check it out and i would like to hear from you in the comments what do you think of this game what do you think of this video and if you'd like to see more videos like this covering games you may not have heard of make sure to subscribe also follow me on twitter and i will see you next time